I want to take a look now at a bill that hasn't been getting any attention in the news. It's called the Generations Invigorating Volunteerism and Education Act. Oh, this doesn't sound good. Also known as GIVE. The House just passed it last week. It was presented as a part of Obama's uh, goal of establishing a national service program. Supporters are calling it the most sweeping reform of nationally backed volunteer programs since AmeriCorps. But critics are calling it an expensive indoctrination and forced advocacy. Syndicated columnist Michelle Mulkin fired up about it, and she's here with me now. Hey, Michelle, isn't this the classic case? Uh, Americans give more, volunteer more than anybody on the planet. Isn't this trying to fix what isn't broken? That's exactly right, Glenn. And what we have here in this six billion dollar boondoggle is a massive legislative Trojan horse that, under the guise of government encouraging volunteerism, simply creates uh, expensive make work jobs, uh, more permanent government bureaucracies, and left wing slush funds uh, that'll be piped uh, straight to uh, groups backed by left wing billionaire George Soros that have a singular agenda, and that agenda is is to make government bigger and make more people dependent on it. Okay, let me give you a couple of quotes here uh, from this. The GIVE Act threatens the voluntary nature of America by, call, uh, by calling for the consideration of a workable, fair, and reasonable mandatory service requirement for all able young people. And Section 120 of the bill discusses youth engagement zones in which service learning is mandatory part of the curriculum in all the secondary schools served by the local educational agency. Yeah, uh, let, let me just clarify. Yeah, let me just clarify the first portion of that, because that was included in Section 6104 uh, of a um, particular segment of an early version of the House bill uh, that would have established something called a commission on, on youth civilian service. And it has been since dropped, but I think that people are justified in being very concerned that this could be reintroduced if the Senate bill passes and in conference report things get slipped in, as they always do at the last minute. Um, but I think that, that e even absent that concern. What is actually in the bill that passed in the House and uh, went through cloture in the Senate this week includes so much that really should set off alarm bells. Like um, what? Glenn, I for example. A, Michelle, Michelle, I have a lot of people calling me on the radio show that say, Glenn, does this mean that my kids may have to perform mandatory service? My answer is no, not at this point, but they are That's setting right. up the blue ribbon panel to find out how to make that happen. In the section of the bill that was in an early version okay, of it. Okay, like that I is said, entirely out? Th that is out for now. But okay. as, as I say, the fact that it was written in an early version right. then, and then dropped after people raised hackles about it, I think tells you about the, the true intentions of the people who have written the bill. But already there's... 115 million for something called a foster grandparent program. Learn and Serve America, 97 million dollars. 100 million dollars leading up to 2014 for something called the Social Innovation Fund. And that is the, the particular social investment fund programming that I was telling you about that goes to groups that are funded by George Soros. Uh, and then, of course, there's the fact that if you look at the past history of AmeriCorps, which this is expanded by, up to a quarter million people would be funded under this six billion dollar program. Program for that. Who, who goes into those programs, Glenn, and what do they work on doing? In the past, AmeriCorps volunteers have done things like lobby for federal housing subsidies, increased WIC funding, increased federal, uh, in, in, Look, increased, uh, federal is... lobbying, and, uh, and, and to do make work and push paper at every federal agency in this government. Okay, Michelle, this is, uh, I mean, we are becoming slaves. We are gladly becoming slaves to our government. This is a quarter of a million people that will be on, on the federal payroll that, of course, they're not going to vote for anybody that wants this slash because they're being paid to be a part of this system. A quarter of a million people that are volunteering their time. Again, we give more than any other nation on Earth. We serve more than any other nation on Earth. What are we doing besides playing politics? 
Well, what we're doing is undermining the, the pillars of civil society. Yes. Jim DeMint gave a great speech on this where he talked about uh, challenging the fundamental premises of pro pro programs like this. You know, uh, that uh, British MP has been getting so much attention for his statement. You really should run Jim DeMint's whole statement. He said, quote, we cannot replace private charity with government programs. I think we need to come to a point as a government that we recognize we cannot do everything. That is okay. the bottom line here. And the fact that you had only 14 Republicans vote against this thing, I think is really sad. Okay, Michelle, thank you very much. I tell you, that the reason why is because you have a few really good people on both sides of the aisle in Washington, but not enough of them, and they're afraid. And they don't understand the difference between left and right, as I explained on last night's program. Huge government, no government, those are the ends. What, what are we doing here? We're all playing over in this area, the, the Democrats and the Republicans. That's why there needs to be a change in America, and the 9-1